search and rescue dogs serve on the front lines locating people missing after natural disasters, lost children, injured hikers, and others. Being ready at a moment's notice to bravely endure the elements and save lives. Supreme Master Ching Hai, world-renowned humanitarian, artist, and spiritual teacher, speaks of her admiration and concern for these devoted canines. And I saw many dogs, you know, they use for a rescue mission. Uh, they just walk in like nothing. But I feel so bad about them. The dogs walk in the sharp, broken glasses or anything like that, even chemical leaking or anything, or, or germs or danger. These are precious dogs. They've been trained for years, and they even lay down their life for anyone at command. You still have to protect that dog. To show her loving support for her search dogs and their human partners, Supreme Master Ching Hai has generously contributed over 80,000 US dollars to search and rescue teams in 18 countries, including Australia, Belgium, Canada, Chile, China, the Czech Republic, Ecuador, France, Korea, Malaysia, Nepal, New Zealand, Panama, the Philippines, Slovenia, the Netherlands, the UK, and the USA. Today's program features one of these courageous teams, namely Canine Search and Rescue of Texas. Founded in September 2000, Canine Search and Rescue of Texas is a non-profit, all-volunteer search and rescue unit based in Houston, Texas, the fourth largest U.S. city. Let us now hear from Mary Jane Boyd, the training coordinator and search manager for the group who has been involved in search and rescue work for 11 years. We require all of our search dogs to be certified on some, to some type of national standard. The National Search Dog Alliance offers certifications on a nationwide basis. Our primary purpose of our organization is for us to respond with our canine partners to requests from law enforcement or other agencies um, in the case of a missing person. All of our canine handlers are certified in ground search and rescue as well as canine search and rescue. Team members, human and canine, must undergo rigorous training in various areas before they are allowed to undertake a real mission. We take crime scene awareness, so if we stumble upon something, we know how to respond. Uh, we all have first aid, CPR certifications. We also have to train in land navigation mm -hmm. so the searchers don't get lost. Um, and in addition to that, we do a lot of awareness level courses, such as swift water awareness, uh, confined space awareness, hazardous materials awareness, just so that we can be aware of certain situations that we may encounter when we're out in the field. Because we are volunteers, we all have full-time jobs, and so our time is somewhat limited as to the time we can commit to the dog's training. But generally speaking, most search dogs are trained within 15 to 18 months would be a good average. Crucial to the success of search and rescue missions is a tacit understanding between each canine team member and their human partner. Some canine team members are able to locate a living person in a large area such as a forest by air scenting, where the dog works off lead and points his or her nose high in the air to identify and follow the scent emanating from a person. Once the subject is found, the canine will return to their human partner and lead them to the missing person. Another common canine search technique is called trailing. Trailing dogs are where uh, you take an article of clothing or a scent article from the person that's missing and then the dog is scented off of the article and then they will track or trail the path or the, or the track that the person walked to, to, in order to locate them. 
What are some of the qualities found in a good search and rescue dog? We look for dogs that like to retrieve because it shows that they will pursue the object that they've been trained to go after until they get it. And we like to see that kind of drive in a dog. It's often more difficult to determine whether or not a puppy is going to be successful. On an adult dog, it's a lot easier because you can test the dog and you can tell whether or not the probabilities are there that the dog will be successful through experience and seeing and knowing what we've seen be successful we are now able to predict with a fairly good rate of success what dogs are going to make it. These dogs are working dogs. They're a little bit more I guess you might say energetic <laughs> than your normal family pet. We asked Mary Jane Boyd about the common breeds that typically serve as search and rescue partners. Similar to adopting a dog as a family companion, if one wants to take in a dog that potentially could be a search dog one day, the best place to look is the local animal shelter. The most common dogs that we see uh, are Labrador Retrievers, German Shepherds, um, you'll see Malinois, Border Collies, Golden Retrievers. Any of the working breeds are generally the norm. Sometimes, you know, we, there are plenty of, of working dogs that are not purebred dogs. There are also, you know, dogs that came from a rescue situation or from a, from a pound that make perfectly good search dogs. When we return, Mary Jane Boyd will give us a live demonstration of search and rescue training. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Animal World, our co-inhabitants, and our program spotlighting Canine Search and Rescue of Texas from Houston, Texas, USA. For these enthusiastic Search and Rescue Canine team members, training is as fun as playing. This is Bosco. He is a, a one-year-old black lab and he's in training for area search, which means he's trained to locate human scent in a big area. It's, it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna go down here just a little ways and hide for, for Bosco, and he's gonna come after me, and when he finds me, he's going to bark, so she'll know that he found somebody. When I'm satisfied with the amount of barking he has done, then I'm going to give him a toy, and that's his reward. That's what he's working for, is to play ball. And uh, <laughs> so it's a lot of fun for them. Being out in the field presents many different challenges, with no two missions being exactly alike. Thus, a human partner must also try and think ahead to keep their canine friend as safe as possible. But when you go into a search operation, is you're briefed on the hazards that may be in an area. And so by knowing what the hazards are in the search area, we can try to anticipate what problems we may find uh, when we feel the dogs. We have to be careful not to work a dog in an area where there's dangerous traffic. The best protection we can give our dogs is to know the area that we're in. And the most important thing is through the obedience training that we do with our dogs outside of our search training is to be able to call them back or stop them when this, we see them getting into trouble. Pete, he's an eight-year-old black Labrador retriever. He's a human remains detection dog. And what I want to show you first is one of the things we use to keep them safe is what we call an emergency stop. So what I'm going to do in just a second, I'm going to call him to me. And so one of you, tell what you say when, but you got to give me room to stop him. So don't let him get too close. He's gonna stop. Just say when okay. or now or whatever. Just tell me what you're gonna say so I'll know when I'm here. Wait. Alright, we're gonna try that again. He was moving. Come on. I'm just gonna stop him. 
Good boy! Yeah! Good dog! Good dog! <laughs> Good boy! Being the veterinarian responsible for the team's canines, Tanya now informs us how to keep search and rescue dogs fit, healthy, and happy. I think the biggest thing is making sure that they stay active outside of search life. Um, you know, whether that's going on regular walks or playing fetch or, um, you know, even with training outside of organized training, um, they're getting exercise doing that way. Also, you know, just the proper food and just making sure that they're taken care of, basically. In their spare time, the lovely canines and the dedicated volunteers from Canine Search and Rescue of Texas further contribute to the community by conducting various outreach programs to inform those of all ages about outdoor survival and safety. We offer to go into schools or Boy Scouts, Girl Scout organizations to talk about the search dogs and what they do and we have a couple of programs. One is a hug a tree program for young children where we explain what they should do if they should become lost. And um, often we also will, for adult groups as well, uh, we'll go in and, dis and we'll do demonstrations with the dogs. And we also talk to them about what they should do should somebody in their family become lost or, or go missing. On behalf of Supreme Master Ching Hai, our association members recently presented her loving contribution of a thousand U.S. dollars to Canine Search and Rescue of Texas for the care of their altruistic canine team members, along with her international number one bestsellers, The Dogs of My Life, The Birds of My Life, and The Noble Wilds. On behalf of Canine Search and Rescue of Texas, I would like to say thank you very much. Uh, to the Supreme Master Ching Hai. We appreciate her generosity. May heaven bless the human and canine team members of Canine Search and Rescue of Texas, as well as other groups all over the world who lovingly dedicate their time and energy to protect and save the lives of others. Their joyful, altruistic spirit is a light that radiates brilliantly throughout our world. For more details on Canine Search and Rescue of Texas, please visit www.caninesartx.org. Thank you for joining us on Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants. Coming up next is enlightening entertainment following noteworthy news here on Supreme Master Television. May all be blessed by the eternal love of the divine. For more details, please see www.suprememastertv.com forward slash AW.